الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين My respected brothers my sisters in Islam Today is a beautiful Saturday night Where would you be if you were not here Where would you be if you were not here Which pub which disco which party and it happens to be easter if not the pubs and discos and parties then which church which temple which god what would you be worshiping subhanallah my brothers my sisters in islam the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave the most poignant image of shirk saying glory be to allah who has guided us to this religion before in the days of the past we used to make gods out of food the companions said in authentic narration they said that when they used to have a harvest of dates they used to make their gods from the dates so they used to pile up the dates and make a god out of it and then they would bow and worship and call upon the god when they were hungry they would eat it they used to eat their gods alhamdulillah for the blessings of islam alhamdulillah for the blessings of tawhid alhamdulillah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us allah and his remembrance alhamdulillah if it was not for this but allah which god where would we be what would we be worshiping subhanallah my brother in islam ibn taymiyyah rahimahullah he said in that beautiful amazing statement Remembrance of Allah is like to the hearts just like water is to the fish What happens to the fish when it is taken out of water? In the same way when Allah is removed from our hearts, there is no peace in our souls There is no peace wallahi in the heart of the person who does not beat every single day his heart for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala There is no peace in the heart and the soul of that human being that has no Islam he is like the walking and talking corpse. He is dead before he actually will die. Such is a person who has no remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, it is for this reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us again and again in the Quran to remember him. Allah tells us and reminds us again and again in the Quran to remember Allah Zawajal only. And he tells us, Allah bi dhikrillahi tatma'innul qulub. Is it not by remembering Allah that the hearts find rest? And we find in the examples of those companions and in those of the greatest of the people that had disobeyed Allah, a earnestness in their hearts when they disobeyed Allah. Take the example of the Noon, the Sahib al Hud, the person who was given the whale. Who am I talking about? Yunus ibn Mata, alayhi salatu wasalam. Yunus ibn Mata was a, a prophet of God who had disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah told him to stay with his people until they believed or he perished and he disobeyed Allah and he got angry with the people because the people didn't believe. So he ran away. He went away, he boarded a ship and then he was overthrown from the ship because the ship was about to sink. They wanted to throw things out. So they threw Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam. What does Allah say about him? Look at how Allah says, and Dhanun, the Sahib al Hud, the companion of the whale, when he went away from his people, ran away from his people, Mughadiban in anger. And he thought that we would not catch him. So he called out in the belly of the whale, in the depths of the darkness of the whale, Allah ilaha illa anta. There is no God but you, Ya Allah. Inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Verily, I was from the wrongdoers. It was reported that Adam alayhi salatu was salam and his wife, our mother, Hawa alayhi salatu was salam, 
both of them when they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Adam alayhi salatu was salam cried for 70 years he cried for 70 years because he had disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can you imagine being in Jannah can you imagine seeing the angels seeing Jannah and Jahannam and then disobeying Allah and knowing how shameful the deed that you just did and so his heart was softened and he cried and cried for 70 years because he disobeyed Allah Azzawajal. my brother and sister in Islam the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam truly softened his heart for the cause of Allah Azzawajal. in the same way as these people as these righteous people who sinned but came back to Allah Azzawajal in the same way our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in every single aspect of his life knew how to come back to Allah with his heart before anything else. We know that the Prophet ﷺ, Jibreel والسلام, came down to him, grabbed him, told him to read. Then the Prophet وسلم, in a state of bewilderment, he ran to his wife saying, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me up, cover me up. Then what happened? What happened was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him a couple of verses. Ya ayyuhal muzzammil, Oh, the one who's wrapped up in garments, Kumil Layla illa Qalila. Stay and stand up the night in prayer except for a bit. Nisfahu awin kusminhu Qalila. Half of it or less than half. Awzid alayhi. Or increase more than half. Wa raptiril Qur'ana tartila. And recite the Quran beautifully. Inna sa nulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. We will reveal to you a heavy word. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood for 23 years giving Islam his blood his sweat and his tears every single time any challenge came to him what was his answer ya Bilal arihna bis salah oh Bilal give the coolness of my heart my coolness of my eyes in prayer his enemies were in front his munafiqeen were in the back ya Bilal where are you give the call to prayer his wife passed away, his uncle passed away, his children passed away. Ya Bilal, arihna bis salah. He was thrown out, his companions were thrown out, the companions were dying in the battle. What did he say? Ya Bilal, arihna bis salah. Nothing to eat except the two black ones, the dates and the water. Ya Bilal, arihna bis salah. Ya Bilal, arihna bis salah. Such was our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With prayer, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would link with Allah Azawajal. With Salah, our Prophet Sallallahu would find his peace. When was the last time we found peace in our Salah? When was the last time we complained to Allah instead of complaining to anyone else? Inni ashku bathi wa huzni ilallah. Verily I complain of my, of, of my problems and my worries only to Allah Azawajal. Let me give you the example of how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam connected with Allah. In the authentic hadith in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, Abdullah ibn Shakir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that I entered upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam whilst he was praying and I saw that his beard was dripping wet as if a bucket of water had been poured on his head. As if a bucket of water had been poured on his head and his beard was dripping wet from crying from the fear of Allah Azawajal. Ya Salam, can you imagine that? Our Prophet Sallallahu crying so much from the fear of Allah. Can you imagine that? In the authentic hadith, Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I prayed with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the middle of the night. And he, in the first rak'ah, he recited Surah Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, and Surah Nisa. And he stopped at every verse where Allah mentions Jannah. And he asked Allah, Oh Allah, let me enter Jannah. And he stopped at every verse of Jahannam. And he said, Ya Allah, save me from Jahannam. Every verse, Ya Salam. Six to seven hours of praying at night. And in the morning, jihad in the cause of Allah. With no food to eat, nothing to drink and fasting for three to four days at a time. Such was our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Such was our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said, I found, I woke up in the middle of the night and I searched around for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I, my hands touched his feet 
whilst he was praying and he was saying in his sajda the following dua. What is the dua that he was saying? Allahumma inni a'udhu bi ridaka min sakhatik. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in your good mercy and your goodness from your anger. Wa bi mu'afatika min uqubatik. And in your forgiveness from your punishment. Wa a'udhu bika minka. And I seek refuge in you from you. La uhsi thana'un alayk. I cannot praise you adequately. Anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. You are as you praise yourself. Look at the way the Prophet praised Allah. Look at the way his heart went out to Allah. Look at the way how he was doing it purely without telling his wife. Sincerely between him and Allah alone. In the authentic hadith, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrated that he once prayed with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the middle of the night. And the Prophet sallallahu made the following dua. Listen to the dua. It is wallahi, not the words of someone except a prophet of God. Listen to how Rasulullah called out to Allah. And imagine when was the last time you called out to Allah in the same way. La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. Allahumma, O oh our Lord, anta nuru samawati wal ardi wa man fihin. You are the light of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between. Lakal hamd, for you is praise. Anta fatiru samawati wal ardi wa man fihin. You are the originator of the heavens and the earth and that which is in it. Lakal hamd, and for you is praise. Anta qayyumu samawati wal ardi wa man fihin. You are the supporter and the nourisher and cherisher and sustainer of the heavens and the earth and that which is in it. Walakal hamd, and for you is praise. Allahumma, Allahumma anta al haq, O Allah, you are the truth. Wa qawlukal haq, and your statement is true. Wa wa'dukal haq, and your promise is true. Wal jannatu haq, and jannah is true. Wal naru haq, and the fire is true. Wal nabiyuna haq, and the prophets are true. Wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam haq, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is true. Allahumma bika amant, Allahumma he believed in you. Wa alayka tawakkalt, and upon you I have put my trust. Wa bilayk. And to your judgment I have submitted. And to you I complain. Forgive me that which I have done in the past and what I have yet to do. And that which I have done publicly and that which I will do in secret. And that which you know more about me than me. You are the first and you are the last. La ilaha illa ant. There is no God but you. This is how our Prophet ﷺ pursued the pleasure of Allah by praising Him and worshipping Him in a way by Allah that no one could ever do your salam. And this is how his heart connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is for this reason why the scholars of the past, they used to say, be wary of the magic of this dunya, for it is worse than the magic of Harut and Marut. The, whereas the magic of Harut and Marut, these were two angels sent to Babylon to teach people black magic. They used to separate between a husband and his wife. The magic of this dunya separates between a slave and his Lord and his creator. How devastating is the magic of this dunya that takes us away from Allah Azawajal? How devastating is the magic of this dunya that takes us away from the remembrance of Allah Azawajal? So devastating is the magic of this dunya as the scholars have said that the heart of the believer are like two scales. One scale you have love for this dunya and the other scale you have love for the akhirah. When the love for the dunya becomes heavy, the love for the akhirah becomes light. And when the love for the akhirah becomes heavy, then the love for the dunya becomes light. Ya salam. Such, are, such is our heart, subhanallah. We cannot love the dunya and the hereafter equal. If we love one, the other one will decrease in its love. If we love the other, the other one decreases. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet wasallam used to love to ask their, his sahaba to recite the Quran to him so he could contemplate on the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the authentic hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu to recite the Qur'an to him. 
So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu recited the Quran that he came to the verse on the, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَاُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا And how will it be, O Muhammad sallallahu when we bring forth from every ummah a witness against them and we bring you as a witness over all of mankind. And so the Prophet sallallahu said, Bakh, Bakh, enough, enough. And he could not stop himself from crying. In the authentic hadith of Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in Sahih Muslim of the Hajj of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it was reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was saying, Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. The whole talbiyah all the way from the Miqat all the way to Makkah whilst his beard was wet with tears. With every single word he was crying. With every single talbiyah the Prophet sallallahu understood its meaning, understood what it meant. And by Allah his heart was going out to Allah azawajal remembering the implications of the talbiyah my brother and sister islam this is the way our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in the authentic narration in bukhari the prophet sallallahu sallam, abu bakr and umar came out of their house only to find the prophet sallallahu sallam, walking up and down in the middle of the night he was walking out uh, up and down in his outside his house in the middle of the night so abu bakr and umar went and asked rasulullah ya rasulullah is everything okay you look really really worried What's wrong? What did the Prophet say? He said, Wallahi, there's a big musibah. What's the musibah, Ya Rasulullah? What's the musibah? Tell us. He said, Wallahi, after salah, I went home. And when I went home, after I went home, I was about to sleep. And near my bed, next to my bed, I found one date. One date, a single date. And I ate the date. And Wallahi, I cannot remember whether this date is a date of sadaqah or charity or zakat which is haram for the nabiyin to eat or was it a date that was given to me as a gift and so wallahi this is what has caused me to be anxious can you imagine a single date of a prophet who allah had forgiven all his past and his future sins that he walks around unable to sleep for a single date for a single date such was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa connected with Allah. And when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam connected with Allah and remembered and adored Allah, Allah adored him back. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who love him. Allah loves those who love him. Allah loves those who fear him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adored Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me show you how. Number one, the first thing, Allah says, وَرَفَعَنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ We have elevated your mention, Allahu Akbar. How? If someone just believes in Allah, but not in Rasulullah he can never be a Muslim. If someone says, La ilaha illallah, but doesn't say Muhammad Rasulullah Rasulullah he can never be a Muslim. وَرَفَعَنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ We have raised your mention. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ look, look at the next verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِنْ ثَقَ النَّبِيِّنَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْصُرُنَّ What is this verse? Did you know that Allah has taken the covenant of every single prophet that came to this earth? Every prophet, 124,000 prophets Allah sent to this earth. Every one of them, Allah took a promise from them that they will believe in Rasulullah if the Prophet was meant to come in their time. Amazing. Amazing. Hundred, even Adam, even Adam, even Adam والسلام, the very first Prophet, Allah took a covenant from him. That part of the covenant of being a Prophet is that if Muhammad وسلم, comes in your time, you must believe in him. And you must help him. It is for this reason why a Suyuti Rahimahullah, he says the greatest Sahaba, the greatest Sahabi is not Abu Bakr. The greatest Sahabi is not Abu Bakr. There's someone even greater than him who is the companion of Rasulullah. Who is it? It is Jesus Christ. It is Isa والسلام, who will come on the last day. And he will have to believe in Rasulullah Otherwise Allah will not accept anything from him. 
He will have to say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and he will die upon that and by Allah he will be a companion of the Prophet So the greatest of the companions not Abu Bakr it's another it's another prophet of God can you imagine that so when our Prophet adored Allah Allah adored him back look at how Allah protected the right of Rasulullah against the lies the people said what did Allah say Allah says about his eyesight he said what his eyesight did not deviate nor did he ever actually actually see a lie his heart did not lie about what it saw. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is protecting the right of Rasulullah over here to be the speaker of truth and telling us all that the Prophet did not lie about what he saw. His heart did not lie about what it, what it saw as well. My brother and sister Islam, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give Rasulullah maqami mahmud, which is the ability to make intercession on behalf of all of mankind on behalf of all of mankind this ability to intercede on behalf of them and this is on account of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adoring Rasulullah in the authentic narration the Prophet sallallahu said for me is al wasila for me the highest station in paradise the greatest of reward is for me in the day of judgment Al Wasila, which is the highest station in paradise, the highest of Al Firdaus, the, the prime number one position. Whose is that? That is Rasulullah. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adored him so much. In the authentic narration, the Prophet وسلم, kept on asking Allah, kept on asking Allah for more and more and more until, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will make the majority of the people of Jannah your ummah. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said, We are the last of the Ummah, but the first to enter Jannah. Last of the nations, but the first to enter Jannah. Why? Not because we have done anything extraordinary. No, Wallahi. Our number of salawat does not equal to the number of salawat of the believers at the time of Nuh. They lived for 950 years. They had longer time to worship Allah. Our number of ibadat and salawat does not compare to them. But by Allah, on account of the greatness of the love for Rasulullah sallallahu and Allah's adoring Rasulullah sallallahu Allah subhanahu wa taala gave him this reward. Why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you all of this because because by Allah, I don't want anyone to walk out of here except to make a firm resolve in his heart to also come back to Allah azawajal, just like the Prophet sallallahu came back to Allah azawajal. Hands up, brothers and sisters, those who either feel right now or have once in their lifetime or at some time in their life felt like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like them or Allah is so far away. Hands up. Show me your hands. People who feel like they're so far away from Allah, right? I know all of us feel the same way or all of us have some time or the other felt like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so far away from us like he's forgotten us like he doesn't like us how can we pursue the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we feel we're so far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let me tell you how have you ever read the tafsir of the surah in the Quran wa duha the greatest the greatest antidote to depression the greatest way to feel good in your heart is to read the Surah Ad Duha because it is the most amazing Surah in the Quran that tells you to be positive and to feel good about Allah. Shall I tell you the meaning of Duha in a way that perhaps you have not heard before? Surah Ad Duha was revealed at a time when the Prophet did not receive the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for six months. For six months, the Prophet did not receive any revelation from Allah. Jibreel didn't come down, he didn't see a dream. You know, there was a time when I used to see a lot of good dreams. And then these days, when I'm busy with Mercy Mission, I'm so tired, my brain is so tired, I actually don't see dreams. Sometimes I don't feel like my salawat, my ibadat is actually making an impact on my heart and on my life. So I feel quite disconnected from Allah. 
Do you get that feeling sometimes, guys? Brothers, sisters? Yes? Sometimes you feel like it's not affecting me. It's like Allah is not responding to me. He's not talking to me. I don't see good dreams anymore. I don't get the shiver down my spine anymore. I'm not feeling the pleasure anymore. What's going on? In the same way, for six months, the Prophet did not receive any revelation from Jibreel coming down all the way to a dream or nothing at all for six months. And so the Prophet thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates him. He thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want him as a Nabi anymore. So all these thoughts were coming in his mind. Isn't that right? When we start thinking the same, some of us start thinking, oh my God, Allah must hate me. Look at my life. Allah must really not want me. Look at the situations, my circumstances. I must be a wretched, downtrodden human being. Allah doesn't care anything at all. Allah mustn't even care about my dua. Sometimes these thoughts come to your mind. This is how the Prophet was when this surah was revealed. So what did Allah say? Allah said, duha." By the sun and the morning in its blazing glory. What duha. So first thing that you tell someone who's depressed, wake up, see the sunlight. It's not all doomsday. It's not all doom and gloom. There's a beautiful sun out there, beautiful light. What duha. Wa saja. And by the night as it envelops. The second problem with people who are depressed is they stay up the nights. They go to sleep in the morning, they sleep, stay up at nights. So everything is doomy and gloomy. They have a bad sleep-wake pattern. And then by the night as it gives comfort. Allah does not hate you, O Muhammad. Allah doesn't hate us. Allah doesn't hate you, Muhammad, nor has he forgotten you. In the same way, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, Allah doesn't hate you and Allah has not forgotten you. Ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala. Walal akhiratu khayrul laka min al ula. And indeed, the hereafter will be far better for you than this dunya. What is coming is going to be far better for you than what situation you're in now. Walal akhiratu khayrul laka min al ula. Wala sofa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda. And very soon, Allah will give you a massive reward and He will make you happy. Very soon, O Muslimin, Allah will give us Jannah, inshallah, and make us happy. Very soon, Allah will give us a victory from all of this and make us happy. Very soon, Allah has promised this and of surety, very soon, very soon we'll go to Jannah, inshallah. Very soon. Isn't this the most beautiful thing to say to a person who feels bad in his heart? Then Allah gives him reasons to believe this. What does he say? Alam yatiman fa'awa. He gives people reasoning so that you believe this. He says, Alam yatiman. Did he not find you an orphan and look after you? Ask yourself, weren't you very sick sometimes? Weren't you a little boy and Allah looked after you? Weren't you a little girl, no one to care for you? And Allah looked after you. Alam yijitka yatiman fa'awa. Wa wajadaka dhalan fahada. And we found you misguided. Did we guide you? Weren't we misguided, brothers and sisters, before we became practicing? I know I never used to pray myself. I never knew about my deen. Didn't Allah find me misguided and guide me? In the same way, weren't you misguided and Allah guide you? Wa wajadaka ailan fa'agna. Didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala find you poor in need of wealth and didn't Allah give you wealth? How many of us came to Australia? We never had any money. How many of us but Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy on us, pity on us and He made us wealthy. How many of us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked after us when by Allah our family still are struggling back home. So Allah gives more and more reasoning to Rasulullah sallallahu and to us reminding us again and again why you should believe everything else that Allah has said, His promises that will come true. So to the depressed person, this is the best way to reason by telling him about the past and giving him reason to believe that Allah's promises will come true just like it did in the past. Then Allah gives the antidote to depression. Do you know what it is? <clears throat> the depressed person is more concerned about himself. But the best way to remove depression and this feeling of being disconnected with Allah 
is to remember those people who are far, far in more difficulty than you. Allah continues and says, and so the orphan, do not be hard on him. And the one who asks you, do not say no to him. So Allah tells us to remember two types of people. The first is an orphan, the number two is a beggar. Remember the orphans, they have no one to look after. You have parents to look after you. You have family to look after you, somewhere to go home. The orphans have nobody. The beggar, he has no food. He's asking you for food. He goes to sleep hungry every day. Allah has given you food. How many of us has ever gone to sleep hungry, subhanAllah? So Allah tells us the antidote, which is to look at people below us. And then the final way to remove this feeling of being disconnected from Allah. Do you know what? And the blessings of your Lord enumerate. Talk about the blessings of Allah. Alhamdulillah for my eyes. Alhamdulillah for my hands. Alhamdulillah for my mouth. Alhamdulillah for my heart. If Allah didn't love us, why is he still keeping us alive? If Allah didn't like us, why is he giving us sustenance for every minute that we are alive? If Allah didn't love us, why are we here today? Sharing this knowledge, increasing in wisdom and love of Allah Azawajal. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, next time you feel disconnected, read Surah Duha. And by Allah, you will feel the same love that the Prophet Sallallahu received from Allah Azawajal. That Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will of a surety bless him and of a surety bless us inshaAllah. Very soon, very soon, Allah's promise will come true. My brothers and sisters in Islam, it is for this reason what Sufyan Thawri says that amazing statement. He said, Wallahi, I would not replace Allah with my parents to be the judge on the day of judgment. I would rather have Allah judge me rather than my parents on the day of judgment because I know Allah loves me more than my parents. Ya Salam. If you believe Allah loves you more than your parents, Allah will love you more than your parents. If you believe Allah can forgive all your sins, Allah will forgive all your sins. If you believe Allah will reward you and enter you into Jannah, Allah will not betray your, your, your faith in Him. Allah will, inshallah, answer your dua and enter you into Jannah, bi idhnillah, inshallah ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, I end with an amazing story of one of the great scholars who used to live in Medina. His name was Jamaluddin Afghani. Have you ever heard of this scholar? Some of you might have heard, most of you probably haven't. But he was such a superstar. He was such an amazing scholar. He did his PhD from Medina University and became a great scholar teaching in the university itself. And Sheikh Jamaluddin Afghani used to give classes in the back of the university where I used to study, Alhamdulillah. And I never had the chance to really sit with the Shaykh. But the Shaykh was, subhanAllah, very well known, very beloved to the people. So once the Shaykh was giving a class, and whilst giving a class, he had a massive, massive pain in his tummy. Very massive pain, so he could not complete his class. So they took him to the hospital, they fixed him up, they did whatever they did. They did some tests, told him, come back after a week, we'll give you the results of the test. They did some biopsies, etc. He came back home, continued his classes for a week. And then after a week, he sent his students off to get the results from the hospital. When he went to the hospital, the students went to the hospital. Listen to this, it's such an amazing story. Wallahi, it's such an amazing story. Went to the hospital, got the results, and then came back to the sheikh whilst the sheikh was teaching his class and the student was crying and his beard was wet with tears and the sheikh saw the student crying and crying and crying and as he sat down in front of them in front of the class so he smiled he knew there was bad news but he smiled so what did he say he said did you get the results? He said, yes, yes, Sheikh, I got the results. And the, sheikh go, the student goes, the doctors have given you only a few days more to live. 
only a few days more to live and when that news hit all the other students were shocked they loved the sheikh so much they started crying and they all got up and they hugged the sheikh and grabbed the sheikh and started kissing him and hugging him and do you know what he said he was the only one who wasn't crying and he was smiling do you know what he said he said he said, Allah loves to meet me. Allah is waiting to meet me. Should I not love to meet him? 